Hello again and welcome to the Boston Spearfishing channel. In this video I will walk you through the shaping process on my inverted roller from the very beginning trying to explain every step. The complexity of the work depends on the design of the gun, but generally it is not that difficult. As you will see I did most of the work on my balcony and in my living room, so everyone can do it. If you think that my videos are helpful, please hit the subscribe button. The big question where to start? Straight answer with making the shaft track before anything else. As I explained in the carbon shaft track video, I consider this groove as the most important thing in a spear gun because everything else is built around it. You can do it by hand if you want, I know that some guys do it, but I strongly recommend not to. For every other part of the work you can do it by hand or by some improvised tools, but here please use professional tools, hand router, table router or whatever suits you, just make sure that the track is straight as possible and your shaft fits nicely in it. Once your shaft track is done wrongly, there is very little you can do to fix it. If you want to know how to minimize the damage on the track, you can take a look at my second video, where I show you how to cover the track with carbon fiber. Moving forward to the handle and trigger mortises. As you can see, this is a normal bench drill, fitted with a hand router bit, and although the refs are too low, I have to tell you it works well enough for what I want from it. I normally leave 1mm of material on each side just as insurance in case the tool or my hand accidentally slip. I will later remove the excess material with my chisels. Using machine to drill the wood not only saves time and effort but also keeps the mortises square to the surface and this is something you should pay attention if you decide to make a handle and the trigger best by hand. Let me show you what I mean. If the pulley axis is not perpendicular to the body, the dynamo will most likely escape the groove. Or if your trigger is not in line with the shaft track, it may not hold the shaft strong enough and you will risk misfires. Once you finish the mortises, it is time to continue with the basic shaping of the wood. Even if you don't have such machines at hand, uh, you can always use your jigsaw for cutting the rough shape uh, and a chisel to fit your trigger. In fact, this is what I did for one of my previous projects uh, and it worked better than you might think. It is time to shape the mortise we just drilled exactly to the size of the handle. I didn't film the process of shaping the part of the handle that will go inside, but I tried to keep all the angles and edges as square as possible. I'm skipping the process of fitting the trigger as well, but I have another video that explains in details how deep the trigger should go and why. It may worth looking if you're a complete novice, because it could save you a lot of time and trouble, and I'm speaking from experience here. When working on the wood with your chisels, make sure they are really sharp, because if they are not, you tend to put more force in it and uh, this is when the accidents happen. If I can give any advice, uh, it would be to take your time and do not hurry. The flat parts of the walls of the mortise are quite easy to work on, but you should pay extra attention on the inner edges. Uh, you want them perfectly clean and square. Next I'm gonna finalize as much as I can the shaping of the handle because once it's glued to the gun's body it will be harder to work on it. For this job I use a hand power tool similar to the Dremel with tungsten and sanding bits. By mistake I did a little too wide gap between the front of the handle and the gun's body so I decided to fill it with a mixture of glue and sawdust. This trick normally works perfectly with epoxy resin, but the glue I'm using is polyurethane and I was not fully convinced if you can actually mix it with sawdust due to its expansion and short open time, but I took the risk and it turned out it was fine. Then I applied the glue to the surfaces making sure everything is completely covered without sparing the glue. Before continuing with the further shaping, I had a final check if my design is properly transferred. I made sure that all the lines are visible and whenever needed symmetrical. This spear gun has a little more complicated design, which means a little more shaping and sanding. 
Some spears say that beautiful guns shoot exactly as the ugly one, and I guess that is true, but if I can make something practical and good looking at the same time, why shouldn't I? When everything is set it is time to move on to the shaping. For the rough process I use files and chisels again and later for the final job a sanding disc mounted on my drill. Despite the enormous amount of dust uh, the disc produces, uh, it proves to be a very useful tool. It is made of rubber and the edges are flexible which allows it to work on oval surfaces very well. The sandpaper I use in the beginning is grid 80 because it's aggressive enough and at the same time provides full control. As the sanding progresses I gradually move the sandpaper to grid 240. For this particular project I had to pay extra attention on the aesthetical decorations but I think it's totally worth the effort. Instead of putting a pin as I usually do, I chose to cut a narrow groove uh, on the head to hold the monofill tied around the shaft. With this done I move to the final sanding. I kinda enjoy this stage very much because the gun is already fully shaped and what's left is to make it as nice as possible. It is tempting to go through the final sanding quickly, but it is much better to take your time and work on every detail to perfection. When the job is finally done, I plan to attach the pins and anchors. I'm not showing this process here, but I will upload another video on how to make and attach the pins and anchors. From the very beginning, I was wondering what finish should I use at the end. Should it only be oil to feel the smooth texture of the wood or to bet on the epoxy again? Using appropriate timber allows the spear gun to be finished with only oil, but still the oil needs to be reapplied quite often if you constantly use your gun. The epoxy finish is by far less demanding and this is the only reason I chose it for this uh, spear gun. Before that though I covered the body with a thin layer of boiled linseed oil, not as much for protection but more to see how it would change the color. Uh, when the oil dried the epoxy stuck firmly to the wood without any problem. So at last there is my completed invert roller. If you like this video or any of my other videos, I would like to kindly remind you to subscribe to Bastuna Spearfishing Workshop. In the upcoming videos I will show you how to make the pins and anchors as well as how to make a fish collar, balance your spear gun and more. Thanks for watching, if you have any remarks or recommendation please comment in the section below.